Flooding is essential for the ecosystem health of a delta. Although traditional delta homes are usually raised above the ground, climate change projections suggest the world's deltas will be prone to increasingly severe floods in the future. With support from the Zed Zurich Foundation, the Global Resilience Partnership Water Window Challenge awarded 12 grants to find innovative solutions to building sustainable flood resilience in challenging environments. This film follows two of the GRP Water Window grantees, one in Vietnam and one in Bangladesh, working to retrofit and build low-cost, floating homes for marginalized people in flood-prone areas. The major new design element includes adding a buoyancy component to the house so that it floats during the flood, allowing the occupants to persist, adapt, and transform in the face of flooding instead of moving away. The data from the pilot projects will be used to scale up and form sustainable business models for propagating the housing design and overall adaptation strategy throughout the region and beyond. The Mekong Delta is home to over 17 million people, most of whom are rice and fish farmers. It's composed largely of wetlands, and its annual flood season is now under threat from climate change, sea level rise, and changes to the Mekong River from upstream hydropower, which will likely cause greater disruption for Delta communities in the future. Resilience for me means helping a community prepare in advance for a hazardous event so that it doesn't become a disaster. And if there is damage or hardship, they can recover much more quickly and resume their normal lives. I'm interested in reducing trauma, in reducing displacement, because I saw so much of that after Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, and it was personally very upsetting for me. Elizabeth and her team are here to collaborate with Vietnamese partners to develop techniques for retrofitting houses so they are better able to survive the anticipated extreme floods and rains of the future. Theo cái đề án nhà nổi có thể làm cho người dân an tâm hơn. Thì hơn nữa là người dân khi có lũ về người dân cùng sống chung với lũ, người dân cùng sống chung với lũ. Tại vì khi sống chung với lũ thì có thể kinh tế tạo ra trong mùa lũ cho người dân. Transformation in the face of extreme flooding is key to building resilience. By turning traditional delta homes into clever amphibious creatures, people can go beyond just coping to actively shaping change. This is a typical Vietnamese house. We retrofitted it to become amphibious. When the flood comes, it will lift up off the ground, buoyed up by these empty recycled jugs, and the rope will slide up on the vertical guidance post and it'll stay on top of the water. As the flood goes away, it will come back down and end up in exactly the same position as when it took off. To help with the retrofits, Elizabeth collaborated with a local master carpenter. <laughs> Để ra mình cũng chưa có rõ là cái quy cách để mình làm cho nên gặp nhiều là khó khăn. Cho nên là mình với cùng cô là có một cái ý thức, một cái giải pháp để tìm ra một cái cuối cùng cũng là được đây đi đến một cái thành công quyết định. There were many challenges the team faced, including developing a centering device that ensures the house comes down in the same position it started after the water recedes. And coming up with a guidepost system that keeps the house from floating away. So what we're doing here is merging 
latest scientific approaches and methods of calculation with the traditional way of making houses and coming up with a synthesis that respects the local culture but is calculated to make sure that what we're doing is safe and well engineered by modern standards. One customer is very satisfied with the result of their amphibiated retrofit. Dùng chủng của tứ giác Long Thiên này nước thì năm gì năm khác nhầm năm thì nước cũng nhiều lắm như lũ năm 2011 là lên đạt khoảng 1 mét chín từ tính từ mặt ruộng đi lên là cao hơn bờ kinh còn như cái nhà mới này thì nước lũ nó sẽ nổi lên thì cuộc sống của mình nó sẽ During the past 12 months, four Delta homes were amphibiated. As each house was structurally unique, the team was able to experiment with the basic components of the retrofit, trying out new designs. Sensors were also installed to monitor tilt, roll, and wind speed. Now we need to wait for the floods to come so that we can show how well they perform or find that they don't perform as well as we were hoping and make changes to the design. Cũng là mới mẻ mới lần đầu tiên mình thấy vậy là cũng rất là hài lòng và có thể là sau này mình có mần thêm có thể mình rút ra nhiều cái kỹ thuật khác hơn có thể là chắc chắn hơn nữa. The local government is also pleased though how the houses behave when water is added is a key point for them. Thì uh, nếu những năm tới lũ về thì có thể là xem lại cái mô hình nhà này người dân sống trong cái ngôi nhà này thì như thế nào thì lúc đó cái cái hiệu quả ra sao thì lúc đó địa phương sẽ xin ý kiến của ủy ban huyện thì lúc đó mới mở rộng ra được. The beauty of an amphibiated house is that it targets the roots of the problem of living with floods, not by building dams or dikes, but by providing a solution that allows people to thrive within the uncertainty of climate change. People are now thinking that this is something that can really happen and it's something that can benefit the community. If we can teach the people to do this themselves, then there's no limit to the number of people who can benefit. Five, two, four, six, eight. We should all amphibiate. <laughs>The Ganges Delta of Bangladesh is a vibrant and very busy place. It is also one of the most densely populated regions in the world. Unfortunately, it is highly exposed to monsoon flooding, which causes great loss and damage to people. South of Dhaka, in the Delta, Breck University and its partners is co-developing with local communities a new type of flood-resilient habitat that is more than just your average home. A house consists of few structural elements, like a house is built on beams, columns, and roofs. But a home consists of many intangible issues, including, uh, including dreams, including love, including the time we spend with our kids. So we use the term home as a platform to address a wide range of vulnerability issues. For Nandan and his team, the project is built on the principles of sustainability and introduces the concept of home as a platform to build resilience. We propose that we can build a house that would float with water and then it will settle back on the ground as the flood moves away. 
It is a community driven initiative, but we have facilitated everything. So we have identified the most needy persons from this area and they would be the beneficiary. Ahmet Unasa works as a seasonal chili picker and raises a grandson. She has lived with floods all of her life. When the rainy season water comes, she lives mostly on her platform bed. Once the sustainable homes are completed, Amat and her grandson will be among the first villagers to move in. Through a series of surveys and training workshops, Nandan and his team, along with the community, designed three experimental flood-resilient homes capable of providing social, food, water, and energy security to local vulnerable families. Together, they came up with a remarkable house plan. We followed that Vastu principle strictly because this project is about sustainability. So natural ventilation, natural light is the most important and integral part of this project. So if we move to the courtyard area, this is the court area. From that court zone, access to every room, every part of the house is possible. The master bedroom, the child bedroom, and kitchen, uh, poultry. The homes are mostly constructed of bamboo because it's locally available, inexpensive, and lasts for more than 20 years when treated. Buoyancy to float the homes during floods is provided by recycled plastic barrels from the garment industry. The community told us that we didn't know how to produce crops during flood, but we can't stop eating food during flood. So food is quite critical. You can live here, at the same time you can grow your own food. Vertical and horizontal hydroponic systems can grow more than 3,000 crops, while an aquaponic system can provide fish to eat and nutrient-rich wastewater to grow yet more crops. A chicken coop delivers eggs on a daily basis, which not only provides a livelihood option, but helps the residents achieve a nutritional balance as well. Other innovations include a rainwater harvesting system, solar panels, and windmills to lift water into the water tower. At the request of the community's children, even a special play zone is created in the attic where they can play in private while they wait for dry land to return. We did a trick here. We put the opening in such a way that children can have easily access to that play zone. If adults go there, they have to, uh, they have to uh, be careful about their bumping into the roof. <laughs> but Fernanda and his team Designing and building these homes isn't without its problems. One of the challenges that we had faced with the community was that we had to build the feeling of ownership towards this project. When they saw that through this house, they can get everything that they require, they were, they were convinced and they were all in. For next steps, when the three homes are finished, the plan is to hand them over to a community group fully trained on how to operate and replicate their sustainable elements. The local government is also positive about villagers embracing the flood resistant homes. We have shown that this works, that it does not need any imported material, that this can be done by the local masons and local technical people. 
if we get support to upscale, I'm sure we'll be able to influence policymakers in Bangladesh, and I'm sure this can be adopted. What we have learned is resilience is not a function of hazard only. If you just solve the problem with the hazard, it doesn't bring you resilience. Resilience is a holistic picture of safety, security, governance, and many other development dimensions. The community now starts believing that, yes, living with flood in a sustainable manner, in a resilient manner, is very much possible.